Welcome back to Twin Cities Live. Ladies and gentlemen, months of grilling weather are ahead of us here Hallelujah. in Minnesota. Whether you have a conventional grill or maybe you use a bit more creative options out there. <laughs> wow. Look at that. You could technically use a That's shopping, a shopping cart. cart. We wouldn't suggest it, but if push came to shove, you could do it. Whatever <laughs> you need to serve up the perfect cut of beef. Yes, and our next guest is here to help us. He's actually a doctor. Ryan Cox is an associate professor with the Department of Animal Science at the University of Minnesota, and he joins us with the science behind beef. Dr. Cox, nice to have you Thank here, you. sir. Thank you. Nice to have what you. What is your PhD in? Meat science. Look really? at that. Yeah. How, yeah, many so people right did you, how many people did you graduate with in the meat science uh, department? A smaller group. Yeah. It's kind of a specific <laughs> Field. I bet it is. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, yeah. okay, this is though means that you're the guy yep. to tell us exactly how to eat different cuts, which is sure. what I love. Now, you have an interesting fact about a marinade and a rub. They're not actually going to make your meat more tender. Everyone thinks that. No, and that's the question we get a lot this time of year, this this early in the spring. Everybody's getting excited about getting back to the grill. Yeah. Of course. Um, but all the ingredients they're adding don't really tenderize anything, unless they're using some sort of enzyme. We'll talk about that. But most of it just changed the way you perceive the food. Um, the tenderness, not necessarily, but the juiciness and the flavor um, sort of influence your, your ability to perceive the tenderness. Wow. Okay, so we're going to look at some very popular cuts. This is a nice cheat sheet for you yeah. at home. And then the rubs that you should use. We'll start with the tenderloin. Tell us what you like about this cut and what kind of rub you use. Okay, so the tenderloin is the most tender muscle in the carcass. It's going to be a very um, good tender bite. It's not necessarily the highest marbling. Um, but what we're demonstrating here with the ingredients is uh, starting with salt, starting with the basics. Um, um, every, every seasoning blend is going to have uh, salt as a base. We have to remember though, and we tell people, you'll notice we've salted this surface and you'll notice the moisture is coming out of that surface. Right away. Right. Yeah, and so we want to be careful not to do that right before we go to the grill because we need a dry surface for browning. Oh. Uh, so really? if there's a wet surface, all we're doing is creating steam, and that steam won't let any browning take place. So when do you want to salt? So you'll salt after you're done, ideally, really? or well in advance. So as this salt sits on the surface, it brings moisture up, yep. but then that moisture will settle back in over time. How long do you, how, how far At least an hour or two. Oh, oh my boy. gosh. But oftentimes we do this, 10 minutes before we salt, For and sure. then there's moisture, yeah. and then there's steam, and so we don't get a very good char, a very good uh, browning, if you will. Well, how about, I've been yeah. doing that wrong forever. <laughs> no kidding, but you do like just using like regular table salt with yes, the tenderloin? absolutely. And why? Very basic. The tenderloin doesn't need a lot of help. It's very, very lean and it's very, very tender. So we just like to appreciate the flavor of the beef. It is really delicious. Oh, yeah. look at you ate it's your great. tenderloin. Yep. Part. I've had all this my tenderloin. Okay, we get multiple gonna... cuts of each on these mm -hmm. tasting tables. So the next that we go to, Flat iron steak. Tell us about this cut. The flat iron's a newer cut that we've been cutting as a flat iron. It was part of the chuck roast. It's actually the second most tender muscle in the carcass. So it just got like a promotion. Yeah, it just definitely <laughs> got a promotion. And we found that since it's so tender, like the tenderloin, but it has more marbling, it's just a fantastic steak for all sorts of uses. Uh, what we're demonstrating with this cut is we have our sort of normal blend with our friends from St. Uh, Croix Valley seasonings, but then using salt in a different way to punch up other flavors. If you don't have enough of a garlic flavor, or an onion flavor, we use salt to um, sort of amplify or accentuate those flavors. Is that what salt does from a scientific standpoint? Among other things, yes. It is certainly a very complex seasoning for something so simple. Oh, because the science oh. guy. How's so that? wait, there is salt in addition to this rub? Yes. Okay. Wow. And it brings up the other flavors. Oh, mm, okay. but just in a moderation, little bit. Just, right. just a little right. bit. Of salt. In moderation, okay. we can do a nice oh, job. Oh, that, that is so yummy. Absolutely. Boy, you guys should be buying a flat iron steak. Yes. Like almost. Yeah. I mean, I love a filet. That's really delicious, but that is almost a little bit better to me than yeah. the filet. It's got a lot of flavor. It's, really it's a fantastic cut. Oh flavor. my goodness, that's good. And what's the price comparison? The flat iron has to be a little bit less expensive than the filet. Oh sure, filets are going to be up above ten, twelve, fourteen dollars a pound, right. whereas the flat iron's down under seven dollars a pound. Okay. Oh wow, that is good that's stuff. Good to know. Okay, yeah. let's talk sirloin. That's what we're doing next. Okay. Now, what do you want us to know about tenderizing ingredients or overusing them? Sure. So we've got the sirloin here, a very popular cut in this part of the country. It's very lean. Uh, very nutritious, excellent steak for grilling. Uh, but what we often do to, uh, is, is we use tenderizers, and so out of the shaker or with fruits and vegetables, yep. commonly pineapple. And so we recommend not overusing that. And we use this example. We actually cut fresh pineapple, and it might be a little harder to see, but you can actually see it starting to oh, wow. actually oh break the muscle down yeah. before it even hits the grill. It's like cooking, it's like cooking it. it. Yep, it is. And so what happens over time, if we were to do that overnight, it would be sort of mushy and we wouldn't want to be able to throw that on the grill. So in moderation, um, fresh pineapple actually is a very nice tenderizer. There's, a, there's an enzyme in there called bromelain and it does a nice job. So, okay, but how far in advance? You say overnight is too far. When do we want to put right. the pineapple on? Uh, in dilution is good. Uh, so diluted with other ingredients or very close, very near grilling. This is incredible though. That's, you know how they say like, 
lemon mm. juice and lime juice can cook seafood in like oh, a right. ceviche. I mean, that's that's such a visual image Absolutely. of that happening right there, that and then process. You just partner that with a little teriyaki sauce? Yes, and then commonly with teriyaki, uh, this is a leaner cut. We remember that lean picks up salt more, mm. um, whereas fat doesn't. Okay. And so with leaner cuts, we tend towards the soy-based, uh, something with the fruits does a really nice job. Oh my gosh, I love that too. Yeah. This is a really good plate. This is, this is really this is so fun. What is happening? Let's go to some more. I like this. The chuck eye. Tell me about the chuck eye. This is coming from the chuck roast too. Yes. So it's coming out of the chuck, um, immediately in front of what would have been a ribeye. Uh, those muscles don't stop. So we've we've cut in a different section. Uh, it's like a smaller ribeye, which is what is really nice about it. Um, so it's a little bit more manageable. Yeah. Uh, it's got all of that laced fat in there for that flavor. Uh, mm. Comes in at a much oh. uh, much easier price. Oftentimes, very much like with the flat iron. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's really flavorful. Yes, very flavorful cut. And what we're yeah. demonstrating with that, and you'll see it's a little darker in the cooked product, is as we go with the seasoning, but then add sugar. Yeah, you got a sweet action going right. on Right, and so I that like sugar is going to actually caramelize on the surface and give us even more browning. When are you putting the sugar on? Uh, that can actually go within the seasoning mix, just, just stepping up the oh. amount of sugar. So your idea here with both of these concepts is that you started with your one seasoning mix that you like, and you like this mm -hmm. Croy Valley food seasoning, sure. yeah. and then you amped one side up with the salt mm -hmm. and then one with the sugar. Right. So you've got one seasoning mix, but you can have it different ways. Sure. That's great. We're scientists. We like experiments. Yeah, you really you look like a scientist. Okay, now let's go to the boneless short rib. Let's talk about this one because this one needs to be cooked in a different way. Sure. So since Grill Fest is coming up and we're going to be out there, you've got a lot of grills out there, lots of grills out there, are, but a lot of them are able to slow cook as well, Yeah. whether that be smoke, smoking or offsetting. And so don't forget that when you're looking at beef cuts. Using the, the short rib as an example, there's a bone-in short rib there on the, on the plate or, or even the flank, and, and we've actually sliced flank. You can see the coarser fiber. They need a little bit more help, but they're very flavorful, mm -hmm. um, and so we can actually put a color on them and then just go to what we call the longer commitment. A little bit more moisture, lower temperature, and it does a really nice job in tenderizing those cuts. It's so unbelievable. Like, I've never done this before. I've just tasted pure cut, 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 cut to have mm -hmm. the different flavor, and sure. it's very fun. Oh, yeah. We think so. I think so, too. <laughs> it's like a wine tasting, but with meat. It makes, sense, that, right? yeah, it makes science a little Clean more palatable. Club, buddy. <laughs> Bam. Way to Fill her go. up. Buffet. Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you. A treat to have you here. Okay, speaking of that grill fest, that's happening. Yes, you can discover all sorts of cuts of beef and what are best for grilling. Um, by the way, we want to mention this. For instance, how you should slice a particular steak and all sorts of other tips on becoming the master chef that we all think we are. Check out that nifty guide. We posted a link to that on TwinCitiesLab.com. Okay. Plus, yes. the Minnesota Beef Council. It's got hundreds of free recipes for you on their website, mnbeef.org. A big thanks to them for sponsoring Twin Cities Live. Very good. And the Department of Animal Science at the University of Minnesota runs a meat and dairy sales room at the U's <laughs> St. Paul campus. I checked it out last year. It is a hidden gem. I love that place. It's open to the public Wednesdays from 2 to 5 p.m. They take orders via email, too. You can, you can find the address right there on our website. And you will see Dr. Cox and the Minnesota Beef Council at Grill Fest, yes. hosted by Minnesota Monthly. You can watch cooking demos, sample all sorts of food and drink, and check out the very latest in grills. A lot of fun. It's happening May 5th and 6th at CHS Field in St. Paul. And you can purchase half-off tickets for Sunday with an exclusive TCL promo code. We've got that on our website. All right, essential oil.